Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt. Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're here in Wakefield and I'm always delighted to be joined by the knowledge Thank that is much. Spencer Fearing. Spencer, I wanted to just get, you, get everyone to look at the suit. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah man. Mort and more. I've got my own collection now as well, but it's more and more that build the suits. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. And since we're talking to you, here we go. The right. knowledge. Right, that's cool. So we're blessed. <laughs> Should we talk some boxing? Yeah, come on then. Let's talk about last night then. Uh, I seen you saw a tweet that's about Lopez beating uh, Lomachenko. Were you were you surprised as many? I wasn't surprised, but I thought it was too early for Lopez. So I thought it could have been a kind of like a a, a May with a Canelo scenario where it was just a little bit too early. Um, but he's gonna Lopez is gonna go on to do great things. But how he dominated and the next thing, a lot of people were going. I've gotten back and forth. A lot of people thinking that that fight was close. The fight wasn't close. Um, in, in my how I scored it, I did eight rounds to four. Um, what's that? Uh, 116, 112. Uh, you can't throw away the first five rounds. Six rounds, maybe. We could maybe we could have gave Lomachenko the second round, maybe. But in that, he landed two punches. So it was very, very, it was very difficult to, to see how what Lomachenko was going to do after that. And if you think if you if you've lost. Six rounds have gone, and you won one of them. The other guys just got to win two more rounds. He's won the fight, and and that's how I saw it. I didn't have no rounds even neither. Uh, I got props, um, Lopez. I didn't think Teofimo could have boxed like that with the pressure. And the nice thing is this: he, he got jerked up a little bit, but the way he sucked it up in the twelfth round, guys got to be commended. Um, I mean, he's got. He, you have to say that he's the undisputed champion right now. Even though we've got Spurious titles all around the place, but we have to say that he's the best in the division. Give him all the props in the world. He got props his father as well. They had a very, very good game plan, and he stuck to it, and it and it came off. But I'm going to be real. I think that the Jorge Linares fight took a lot out of out of. Um, um, Lomachenko. Lomachenko, I think it took a lot out of him. That was a hard fight because then after that, if you think about the fights, that he didn't overly impress me in the Luke Campbell fight, and that's because Luke Campbell's a damn good fighter. People weren't giving Luke Campbell the credit, but maybe you had 300 odd amateur fights, right? Uh, uh, fought in the was it the 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 WBS? So you, you do, yeah, right, right, so, yeah, yeah, right. So you're doing all these kind of fights. It takes its toll on you. And I think that's what happened. It's taking its toll on him. But not also, it's like his build is gonna be this big superstar. And and that was a superstar performance that we got yesterday. And also fighting in, in close confinement, where you haven't got a crowd there and everything else, for a man of Lomachenko who does a lot of psychology stuff and everything else, you'd feel like that would have suited him more. And it didn't. It suited Lopez more. Lopez bossed the fight. Kate, it was, a, it was a really, really good win, and, and, and I think he's going to be a very, very good champion. I think he can make his mark in the 140 pound division because I done an interview with uh, Tia Fimo back in February out in Vegas. He's a big kid. And he said to me that once he beats Loma, he's moving up to 140. Now, when I was looking at him, he's a big kid in terms of his frame. He's stocky, but his height stocky is... yeah, he's stocky. Yeah, I know. But it's, it's not, you know, when uh, Lloyd Hannigan, the former undisputed World War VIII champion, always said to me, it's not whether you're big enough, it's whether you're good enough. And what he proved yesterday, he's absolutely good enough. Definitely. Well, there's a reason why you're here. You're part of the MTK team, analysis team. You break down the fights tonight on MTK card. Another good card tonight. Unfortunately, we've lost three fights on the card. Yeah. But we've got some four. We've got four great fights. Yeah, we do. Uh, leading up, we've got three main. The three main fights are on the card still there, and we've got a debut for Paul McCullough. Um, Paul McCullough. Let me tell you this. That he's from Belfast, right? That's right. That light heavyweight. He's a beast, right? I'm telling you now. Uh, he's managed by Dave Caldwell. Dave Caldwell found out, oh, this kid, I've heard about him already. He knocks out everyone. So, but he's very well schooled as well. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's like, was it, um, Johnny O'Brien trains him. Uh, Johnny's a cool, cool guy. I'm going out to Lanzarote to spend some time with Johnny. I love Johnny, I've known him for 
a little while with good, 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 good people. So I'm looking forward to seeing his debut because that guy is serious, man. Paul Butters, Paul Butters back, like in a tough fight against Ryan Walker. Um, yeah, you know what? <clears throat> Paul Butler is back, but you've got it's um, young Mickey Moo's son <laughs> is training Ryan Walker. And I just think it's about levels. I mean, it's about levels and experience and everything else. But I do wish uh, Ryan all the success in the world because, like, Ryan's a kid that will fight anybody. Mm -hmm. Doesn't care. He'll fight anybody. So, he's proved that in his last fight yeah. with Lee McGregor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But, and he's been sparring with Lee McGregor as well. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's good. That's good. But when you're, he's going up against Joel Gallagher. Joel Gallagher is being Ring Magazine trainer of the year. And then you're getting a young kid going against someone like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, see what you you like I, see, I see what you mean. Yeah. Like goes. Again, moving up on the card there, Jay Harris against Marcel Braithwaite. Jay Harris, former well, world title contender, showing his showing where he belongs against Martinez in his last fight. Jay Harris is the real deal, right? And then sometimes you can go into fights. We've seen like right throughout history. What was it 81 as Jumon Nelson uh, versus Sanchez? It wasn't Jumon Nelson's time. You know what I mean? But he learned from that. And we've seen guys who go into world title fights and they don't actually win the title at the time, but then they learn from it. But Jay Harris, he, he's the real deal. But you know what? I rate Bra Braithwaite. Braithwaite, he's been trained by Pat Barrett. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a good fighter. And I, I'm looking forward to watching that fight. And also, Jay Harris is a very good rapper. Sorry, Jay Harris. Braithwaite is a very good rapper. Mm, is Seriously. Yeah, what? Stormzy, you better watch out, man. <laughs> this guy could be the new chipmunk. There you go, <laughs> so, eh? Everyone gunning for Stormzy. Yeah, everyone. Uh, and then we'll move up uh, for the main event. Uh, Michael McKinson and Martin Harkin. You might not know a lot about Martin Harkin, but... I do know I a do. lot about him. Oh, I've watched, come that's on, where they call you the knowledge. That's right. <laughs> my, my, listen, Harkin can whack you, know? Don't... And he, 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 how can you say, like, there's, there, there, is, there is nothing overly special about him. Yeah, but he does things just right. You know, he's got very good timing, he's got very good one-two down the middle, and he's got a killer left hook, right? He has got a very, very good left hook, right? And he's got a left hook that he doesn't turn, he, he throws it up like his thumbs to the ceiling. There's a difference, mm -hmm. right? There's a difference. So down your arm, you have the radialis, and automatically your muscle tenses when you're throwing it. If you keep it like this, the muscle doesn't tense because the radialis isn't activated. Just taught you guys something, right? So you think of all the great fighters, Mike McCullum. Uh, Mike Tyson, Julio Cesar Chavez, they all threw their left hooks with it, with it facing up to the up to the ceiling. Thumbs up. Uh. Yeah, thumbs up. Someone like Sugar Shane Mosey would usually throw his shots like this, right? And his shots you throw like that. But you know what? It is potato potato. But I'm saying the best way to throw it is to throw it where you would thumb up to the ceiling because it it activates the radialis and you get more power. You get more power for pressure on your on your shot. Oh, there you go then, eh? yeah. the knowledge speaks again. Exactly. Um, well, how, do you, how do you see that fight going then? Do you think it's going to be a tough fight for McKinson tonight? Both undefeated fighters? Yeah, but you know what, on, on times like this, when you think about this, it's, it's a really, really sad situation of COVID that we're going mm -hmm. through, right? And you know the amount of testing that we had to just get into the building. But what I would say is this, it's excellent for boxing. Because now no one's got nowhere to hide. Mm -hmm. You want to fight on shows? Okay, then you want to get slotted in? Alright, you're going to have to fight somebody proper. Then we are not going to bring in no Latvian out for you who's lost 56 fights and won two. No, you're going to have to fight somebody. And that's the good thing. So it's competitive fights, right? So the, 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 the reverberations around the world is that the best guys will have to fight the best guys. And it goes through, through from tears to tear to tear. Everybody's got to fight. And you've got to fight somebody good. And that's, that's what is enjoyable about the sport. And our beloved MTK Global. So you know what I mean? Because we're making the right fights. Definitely, definitely. I'll, I'll be remiss of me and I wouldn't be doing my job but if I didn't ask you your opinion on Wilder Fury 3 is off now, it seems. And did you see that coming? Did you? Oh, come on, man. Uh, right, I'm promoting another channel, but Pep Talk. I told Pep Talk in oh, February. Oh, it's all love. You it's all love. I'm right? Pep. Yeah, I'm they're, Pep. They're, they're, they're my people, right? Pep Talk, I told him about the Deontay Wilder situation with Mark Breland and that Mark Breland was getting the elbow. I said this, February, spin it now, we're in October. So I told you this eight months ago, they weren't listening, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't really listening, but you should have listened. So now they've got rid of Mark Breland. Check this one out, Mark Breland prolonged the career of Deontay Wilder and that's that. But I am saying this, Deontay Wilder, where the rematch is off, is still helping his career because he would have taken that Tyson Fury fight would have been ludicrous in my mind because who have you trained with what have you adjusted to learn 
What, what, what have you done to improve? You've, you've done nothing. You know what I mean? What have you shown us? Apart from you twerking in a video, what have you shown us? None. So, and that's not me having a go at Deontay Wilder. I'm just telling you how it is. So, Deontay Wilder is actually going back to the growing board. So, Deontay Wilder is going to have to now go and find someone to go work with, apart with, from Jay Diaz, where you can administer the fundamentals in boxing inside of Deontay Wilder because he doesn't do the fundamentals very well. But if he can do them, then he, he's going to be a problem. If you punch like that, you're going to be a problem. So I'm kind of glad the fight's off. So Andy Joshua can concentrate on Pulev and whoever Tyson Fury ends up fighting in December. I hear that a lot of people talking about a Jagba. So it could be um, um, that heavyweight knockout artist, <laughs> him. It could be him, right? And then hopefully both guys come out successful and then we can get the fight that we all want to see. And that's Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury or Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua, how you want to ever call it. It doesn't make a difference to me. But you know what? The greatest thing is that the, the undisputed World Heavyweight Championship, which hasn't happened since Lennox Lewis, right, when he beat Evander Holyfield, that it stays in the UK. So please two fingers, I'm out. Tune into the show, swipe up or wherever it is, I'll get little clips. But tune into the show today. It's live on ESPN Plus, it's live on IFL, and it's on YouTube, and it's gonna it's be free. Great. And it's free. It's free. <laughs> Just Spencer. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt.